Mesh mixing parts and solids within Mesh Mixer is a lot of fun and allows anyone to quickly create a mashup of solids and parts with little know-how. Mesh Mixer installs a default library of open parts and solid parts which will get you started and you can expand on these by creating your own. The open and solid parts can be found in the Mesh Mix bucket and are categorized by their type. For example, heads, legs, letters, primitives, and the category where you will find your own parts and solids you create. Adding an open part or solid onto another object is as simple as dragging and dropping. Let's say I want to replace this bunny's head with something else. Before I give this bunny a new head though, I'll select his existing head and I'll use Erase and Fill to give me a clean surface to drop a new head onto. Okay, now clicking the Mesh Mix panel, I can choose the category for heads from the category drop-down list. You see that these are open parts by the blue and white thumbnail for each head here. I can click and drag the head I want onto the top of the bunny object, which gives me some controls of how I want this to look. For example, I can move the head part by clicking and dragging the white sphere around into position. To rotate the part, click inside the circle and drag it around the center to rotate the part into the orientation you want. Finally, you can scale the part to the right size by clicking and dragging the triangular tab on the outside of the circle. You can go back and forth between adjusting these until you get something you like. For some more advanced options, you can click this little circle on the Mesh Mix Manipulator to toggle an orientation and twist control. Clicking the circle again toggles back on the default controls. Also, the Mesh Mix panel on the left will allow for some extra control. I'll click Accept to finalize adding the part to the bunny, and you can see the goose head has been added to the bunny as the same object. Solid parts are a bit different in that they don't attach to the existing object at an opening. Rather, they are combined, keeping intact their form. Here in the Primitives category, you can see these are solid parts, as their thumbnail shows a solid blue object in the bottom right corner. I'll use one of these objects as a geometric tail for my bunny. Here I drag it on top of the model again and can use the same type of manipulator as I did for the part to position it. What's different here is that the whole solid part is combined with the target object as opposed to the previous example of the open part where the goose head was attached to the target object. With this solid part added, I have some overlapping geometry where some of this solid part sits inside the bunny. To fix any overlapping geometry issues for 3D printing, I can perform a make solid on this object to create a clean, healed mesh ready for 3D printing. You can see that the open bottom is also cleaned up here. You can adjust the parameters for make solid to get the accuracy and resolution you want. So here we've seen the difference between mesh mixing an open part versus a solid part. One last behavior I'd like to show is that if you drag any open part or solid part into an empty space in the scene, it inserts the object into that scene as a separate object. For example, here I drag a primitive solid onto the scene, which I can use for any editing or mixing with other objects. The Make Solid tool is a quick way to make your Mesh Mixer projects 3D printable. You can use the Make Solid tool to fix common mesh issues your object may have, such as self-intersections, overlaps, non-manifold geometry, and minimum thickness requirements for a particular 3D printer. You can also combine a bunch of separate objects into one 3D printable object with the Make Solid tool. I found both of these models in the 123D gallery at 123dapp.com. The first thing to do is to make the winged shark. I can do this by importing both my shark and wing models and positioning them appropriately. I can delete these pectoral fins since I'll replace them with the wings. I can hide the wings using the object browser. Now select the shark and enter selection mode to select the pectoral fin. When that is selected I can choose edit, erase and fill, and accept. Then I can repeat with the other pectoral fin. Next, I want to give my scene the proper scale that I want to print it out at. I can do this in the Analysis bucket using the Units Dimensions tool. All I have to do here is tell Mesh Mixer how long I want to print this winged shark. I'll enter 150 millimeters or 15 centimeters. Press Enter and my scene is scaled appropriately. The wings and shark model are still separate objects here. 
So I'll use the Make Solid tool to make a 3D printable model from them. First, I multi-select the wings and shark using the Shift key. Next, click Combine to make these two objects into one object. You can see this in the Object Browser. Now I have one object. Now I'm ready to use Make Solid to make sure the wing shark is 3D printable in the multicolor sandstone material. With the shark selected, click Make Solid from the Edit bucket. You see the shark is automatically made into a solid, watertight model with no self-intersections. This is basically what the 3D printer is like. I can adjust the settings for the Make Solid tool to get a denser, more accurate mesh, then click Update to see the result. Since my wings are basically unsupported features, I'll make sure to enter 3 millimeters in the minimum thickness setting for the Make Solid operation and click Update. Note that you have to choose the accurate setting for minimum thickness to work in Make Solid. Now I know this model is ready to 3D print and meets the recommended minimum thickness setting for the full color sandstone material. Painting and printing a full color 3D print in Mesh Mixer can be made through the integrated 3D printing services. Building off of the winged shark model I made in the last lesson where I covered Make Solid, I'll now paint it in Mesh Mixer to print in full color. The Paint Vertex brush can be found in the Sculpt bucket when you toggle over to the Surfaces type of brushes. Here I click to select the Paint Vertex brush and choose a whitish blue color with the color picker. I'll start by giving a coat of this color to the whole model using a large size brush at full strength. Now if you don't see the color, it's because your viewport color setting is set to visualize face groups. You can change this by pressing and holding the space bar and choosing the left thumbnail in the color selection. Now I can see my color as I paint it onto the model with the paint vertex brush. Looking at some reference imagery of a Mako shark, I can see I want to add a darker color on the top of it. I basically want to fill out these sections of color and then I'll blend them together with the smooth color brush afterwards. Here I add in the grays and dark blues I see in the reference image. Now I can blend the colors together with the smooth color brush, found right here next to the paint vertex brush I've been using. Painting with a stencil will allow you to add some subtle detail on top of your previously painted colors that we've blended together. Here I have a black and white image I found on the web with some nicks and scratches. I can import this image as a stencil for the paint vertex brush, which essentially only lays down paint where there is white in the image and stencils out the areas where there is black. Here I add some details with the stencil active on my paint vertex brush with a dark color set. Now an important thing to know when using this method to paint your models is that the resolution of the paint strokes are limited to the resolution of your model. Meaning if there are more triangles in an area you are painting, you will get sharper definition with the paint strokes. For example, to paint the black eye on this shark, I see that my mesh isn't dense enough to give me a nice circle here. To be able to paint a more refined circle, I can increase the resolution with my refine brush. I can find the refine brush in the volume type section of the sculpt bucket. I just need to toggle over to the volume brushes and can choose the refine brush here. To visualize what it is doing, I can press W to see the triangles. When I paint with the refine brush with the small brush size, more triangles are added to the object. I'm not moving the curvature of the object, I'm just adding more triangles to the existing form. Now when I go back to my paint vertex to paint the shark's eye, the extra triangles I added allow me to paint the circle. Here I just make the brush size the size of the eye and click and hold to paint in that dark color for the eye. Finally, when I'm finished painting and ready to order the print, I can click the print button at the bottom here. 